In this video, we are going to discuss all about binary DFC reactors, some of the strongest reactors in HBM's mod capable of producing over 100 tera HEs per second with the cheapest fuel available for DFC reactors. So imagine what they will do with some of the strongest fuels. Now before starting this video, I would like to thank P3 and Yaxin for actually helping me and showing me how to build these reactors and also a very big thanks to Velikan for the new channel intro. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So before jumping onto the binary DFC reactors, first let's take a quick look at the normal DFC reactors or single core DFC reactors. So these reactors have five core components. The first is the DFC emitter, then there is the DFC receiver, third one comes the DFC fuel injector and the fourth one is the DFC stabilizer. And at the center of all of this is the DFC core. Now the DFC core receives fuel and stabilizer energy from the stabilizer and the fuel injector and the DFC emitter basically transmits a beam or energy into the core which is then amplified and sent into the receiver. Now this emitter can be set from anywhere from 1 to 100 and that energy is then received by the DFC receiver which can output it. So if I start this DFC emitter right now, you can see that the beam goes inside the core, it gets amplified and is then received by the receiver and we are producing 5.47 giga HEs per second. Now this power produced is directly proportional to the energy we are giving the core. So if I set this DFC emitter to 10 let's say, then the power which is produced by the receiver will also increase 10 times to 54.7 giga HEs per second. If I set it to 100, then the power will increase by 100 times. So at max power, we are producing around 547 giga HEs per second. So that's how a simple DFC works. Now let's build the binary DFC. The reason that this reactor is called the binary DFC reactor is that instead of using a single core, it uses two cores between its emitter and its receiver. That is why it is called the binary DFC reactor. And it is pretty modular. So yeah, let's quickly see how to build this reactor. So first place down a fuel injector and after leaving a five block gap, place down another fuel injector. There. Now get rid of the temporary blocks and place five more blocks on top of the fuel injectors. 3, 4 and 5 and same goes on the other one as well. Now on top of these 5 blocks, place down your DFC core or your dark fusion core and get rid of the temporary blocks. Now start building on top of these dark fusion cores and place down 5 more blocks. 3, 4 and 5. Then place down 2 more and get rid of the one in middle. So place down 3, 4 4 and 5 then 2 more and get rid of the one in middle then place down 2 dark fusion core stabilizers facing downwards into the core there and finally we need to place our emitters and receiver so I'm gonna call this core A and this one B so at core A is going to be our emitter so bring back 2 more bracket like this and place down a DFC emitter and do the similar process on the other side place down five blocks for five block gap two more break the one in middle and here place down a dfc receiver and with that the basic setup of the dfc reactor is complete all right so now let's start placing down our stabilizer lens in the dfc stabilizers and set them to 100 and do not forget to press the save button so press down your stabilizer lens and set the value to 100 and then save it. Next up, we want to fill our core. So place any compatible material. I'm going to use the vibrant singularity and place down any two catalysts surrounding it in the dark fusion core. So now we have a similar setup as we had in our single DFC reactor. Now for our fuel, we are going to use the cheapest fuel available, which is the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Now the reason I am using this fuel, I am just going to show you guys in a little bit before set up both the fuel injectors to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Now for the, uh, for the sake of this tutorial, 
I'm going to use infinite fluid barrel but you do not need to use that as these fuels can be produced in an infinite amount even in survival so yeah but just for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to place two barrels one with liquid hydrogen and one with liquid oxygen and infinite fluid barrels in both of them and do not forget to set these fluid barrels to output only then will they output their fuels or their fluids into the fuel injector and do the same on the other side as well infinite fluid barrels in both of them and set it to output there we go so now the cores and the fuel injectors both of them should be full with the fuel their respective fuels that we have provided them so now once this is done let's do some cable work so connect the stabilizers the two on the top with cables going like this and then bring the cables forward and connect them to the dfc emitter as the dfc emitter and the dfc stabilizer are the only two things that require power in this entire setup the dfc receiver will produce power and the fuel injector doesn't need power at all now i'm going to use an infinite battery in this case but this cable is where your power will be incoming or where you are going to input your power so it can be connected to your power grid from an rbmk reactor or something like that and with that all the three components the emitter and the two stabilizers should be full with power next up we need to do an important thing which is set up the cryo gel as without cryo gel these emitters and receivers will melt down so extend some cryo gel ducts from the emitter and from the receiver and once again bring them out to the middle now for this tutorial once again i'm going to use the infinite fluid barrel but you will need to use multiple uh, cryogel chemical plants in order to fuel this reactor as it is going to eat through cryogel like anything all right now before doing uh, before starting the reactor place down one block in front of the receiver and then place down your fensu now the reason we place it one block in front is because that if you notice if i place the fensu here then the connecting port is one block behind it. So by placing the FENSU like this, it is directly connected to the receiver. Now the reason it is directly connected is because the cables have a limit of 40.8 Giga HEs per second. They cannot transfer more power through them. So in order to extract the full power from the receiver, you need to place your storage block directly on top of it, or at least you need to do that in this update. So just for perspective, I am going to run the single core DFC reactor on a power of 10. And the fuels are same, cores are the same and we are getting 54.7 Giga HEs per second. So that is the power we get with a similar configuration in a single core DFC reactor. Now let's see how good it runs on a dual or a binary DFC. So now as you can see there are a total of two cores and we are getting 3.28 tera HEs per second. Not even giga HEs, this is 3.28 tera HEs per second. Several times more than the single DFC reactor can produce. This is how crazy the binary DFC reactor really is. But you can push it even more. If you set the power level to 16 and then run it, this is the maximum amount of power that the reactor can produce in this configuration. 52.55 tera HEs per second. Now, this is maximum because you cannot push the emitter further than 16. If you do that, the reactor will actually explode. Now, the reason we used liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, as I told you guys, was so that we can produce them infinitely even in a survival world. So, if I take a chemical plant here with a self charging battery and the chemistry template for cryo electrolysis. You just need to supply this chemical plant with infinite water and place down your speed upgrade in there and this chemical plant will produce infinite liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen now what do you what can you do in order to increase the amount of power produced well you can change the fuel in the second core so if you remember we had two cores right so in the first core where the emitter is i'm just going to keep it to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen but in the second core I have placed tritium and deuterium with the similar setup. So now the second fuel is 
tritium and deuterium and now when i going to power this emitter at a power level of 16 we are going to produce over 110 tera cheese per second that is crazy that is more power than you will ever need in your world and this is not even the strongest fuel in the game now this is what happens when you set the power level more than 16 i have just set it to 17 one more and boom so it produces a folk wagner field powerful enough to make a crater that is over a thousand blocks in diameter that is one of the biggest explosion there is in the game it ignores blast resistance whatsoever and completely wipes out a massive area it's even out of my render distance so yeah be very careful while operating this reactor i hope you guys like this video if you did do smash that like button subscribe to the channel for supporting me peace out guys stay safe